far from any humans, where wild animals rule, is one of the most extreme environments on Earth. The deadly dry season gives way to an epic flood every year. Two men risk their lives to film this secret world in the heart of Brazil. They have a single year to capture the amazing array of species. I got shots that were far beyond my expectations. Lawrence chases the elusive jaguar and dives alongside one of the most dangerous species underwater, the anaconda. Most people feel sorry for the prey, but I sympathize with the predator. Aroldo pursues predators on the ground and in the air. Each day is a new star in the Pantanal. Getting the shots and surviving relies on skills honed over decades. Everything was happening in front of us. There's one iconic animal that symbolizes danger in the Pantanal. It's the legendary giant snake that haunts the waters here, the anaconda. Adrenaline pumps and you get really thrilled because you never know what you're gonna get. I'm sailing on dry land. It's one of the most surreal things I ever done. Searching for anaconda in the middle of poor plantations by boat. Anacondas like to hide. On previous expeditions, it took Lawrence at least 10 days to find one. How do you believe me that there's a river here? We arrived to Formoso River. We've got a good chance of finding an anaconda. This time, Lawrence brings along anaconda dive expert, Juca, to find just the right spot. Watch out for the thick branches before the rapids. Look out, look out. It's all right. Wow, now the foliage is closed right in, Juca. I need the machete here. It's all in a day's work. We're putting ourselves through all of this just to find a snake 22 feet long or more. So I can swim with you. His greatest danger is that an anaconda might mistake him for an animal coming to drink. Anacondas are ambush predators with a mouthful of needle sharp teeth. Over there, I can see an anaconda. There. How long is it, Shuka? 26 feet. Look how big its head is. Time to get in the water. No sudden movements at times like this. also coil around their prey, like a python. If it goes for him, Lawrence might not escape alive. I don't feel any fear while filming. I just look through the viewfinder and focus on my picture. 
He's still cautious, since they can strike fast. Lawrence can't believe how huge the snake is. How lucky. Man, this is great. And an anaconda as big as this boat, nearly 26 feet long, a couple of inches from my face. What an amazing feeling. Mas vale a pena demais. But then, something even more amazing happens. On the way back, Juca spots a shadow in the water. It's an incredible stroke of luck. A second snake, nearly as large as the first. When an anaconda coils, it's ready to attack. Time to get out of the water. I came here to dive in my teens. We've been filming professionally here for 15 years. But I never, never ever found two large anacondas on the first day. I feel incredibly lucky. That night, when I realized that an eight-meter snake was that close, I could hardly sleep. Aroldo heads north. It's been a year of exceptional drought. The rains are delayed, which means the Caymans are hurting for water. The only way to find these lagoons is to talk with people around, the people who live there. Even if you know the region, you don't know all the lagoons over there. Aroldo finds a record gathering. In 30 years in the Pantanal, this is the first time I have ever seen a lagoon with so many caimans. I'm guessing there are 10,000 here. The caimans have devoured so many fish, there are hardly any left. But the gathering has another purpose, mating. The caimans vibrate in the water to show off their size and strength to potential mates, creating sound waves too low for human ears to hear. Aroldo captures another one of the remarkable secrets of this remote wilderness. It was a great prize to be there exactly when everything was happening in front of us. Lawrence heads into jaguar territory. His goal is to capture rare behavior never filmed before. The jaguar is different. It's the most challenging, the most impressive animal. Every time I spot one, it's as if it was the first time. What makes me anxious to film jaguars is that we never know if we're gonna find them. And if we find them, we don't know if we're gonna be able to film. He wants to film a kill, but has to make sure he's not the prey. When we're focusing one jaguar, we must be aware because other one can come from behind. This is how 
how we work with Jaguars. We keep the river between us. We keep to the opposite bank. I can zoom right into his face. Perfect. Perfect safety. Then something catches his eye. Something moving to the right of the Jaguar. A second big cat. He's been tracking these two males for the past three days. Everything you read about the Jaguar says they're solitary creatures. But maybe these two never got the memo. Lawrence and his camera just confirmed one of scientists' latest theories. Jaguars are neither loners, nor as aggressive to other jaguars as scientists used to think. We're seeing something different, two of them together. This is truly amazing. Bird expert Aroldo is looking for the Pantanal's largest flying bird, the Jabiru stork. But first, he has to figure out how to rig a camera in their nests. All the Jabiru nests are very high, more than 15 meters above the ground. And the most difficult thing is to throw the first line, so it must try several attempts. If we had hunted birds as kids, we'd be good shots with our catapults. But we were too well behaved, so now it's hit or miss. Aroldo searches for nests that will soon harbor a clutch of eggs. It's ready, with a bed of dry and green leaves. He's making a gamble with the Pantanal's fierce winds and rain. For the Pantanal animals, survival can be a lottery. Lawrence wants to capture jaguars hunting, and it won't be easy. On the open riverbanks, the jaguar's success rate is low. Hey, Ailton. Good morning. Yeah. When we see an animal as powerful as a jaguar, we imagine that it never fails. But when you start to follow them to get a predation shot, we realize how hard it is for it to get a prey. Fighting insects swarm here too. We are here filming the Pantanal sunset at Porto Jofre in July. It's the beginning of the dry season, and the good thing about filming now is that there aren't many mosquitoes. There are loads when it rains. Just imagine what they are like then. Let's go home. We've donated enough blood to the mosquitoes already. It will all be worth it if we end the day with a few minutes of Jaguar footage. The floods recede, the dry season kicks in, and the heat mounts to unbearable levels. As temperatures soar into the 90s, Aroldo is determined to film creatures driven by thirst to one of the few remaining oases. I'm going to the lagoon now to do the work I like most. That is to wait the whole day to see what's going to happen in that specific lagoon. So when you are there and you stay quiet for a long period, you become part of the place. The animals will come, they accept you, and you get everything you want. Aroldo has to choose the right place to set up. Otherwise, he'll frighten off the very wildlife he's trying to film. 
It's hard to tell which way the animals will come, which is the best site to set up with the best light to get good shots. I'm trying it here. They will probably come from over there. Probably towards the camera, which is ideal. Now we just wait and hope that they all show up today while we are in position. Natural history filmmaking demands patience and persistence. Look, a monkey drinking water. Look, two monkeys. Aroldo's filming will be impossible if the animals smell him. If we were lucky, the wind won't carry our scent, and they will definitely come. A sun bitter. A tapir, a deer, whatever remains of the water draws animals like a magnet. When you run into an animal in nature, you must appreciate that moment very much. It might never happen again. By halfway through the year, Lawrence's mission to catch a jaguar making a kill demands all his reserves of patience. I could never imagine that filming jaguars could be sometimes boring. I've spent up to seven hours watching the same animal taking a nap. And what's really worse is that we must be absolutely ready because when it stands up, it can go to action in a matter of seconds. It's nearly 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Today is Sunday, a day to play with your kids, having a barbecue, watching a game. I don't even know the score of Santos' big match. And we've been here since 8.30 this morning, waiting, waiting. Lawrence needs to move frequently to have any chance to shoot a jaguar kill. Adding to the difficulty of filming, jaguars often hunt as light fades. Wow, with any luck we'll be all right. It's 20 to 6, we've been waiting since 8 this morning, and it's been worth it for the marvelous hour we've had with this jaguar trying to hunt in front of us. Aroldo is also deep in the forest nearby, after the legendary giant otters that grow as big as a man. Let's go for it. This shoot is about quiet as much as patience. The biggest otters in the world live in families with new young. Aroldo takes care not to disturb the otters at their den. It's working. Let's keep really quiet. If you don't pose a threat, animals will interact with you. They will allow you to film them and see them doing interesting things. But it doesn't happen every day. Today, an animal that's very shy is allowing us to come close. Within yards. A 
Haroldo's unthreatening approach means the otter family soon behaves as though he isn't there. They keep the young hidden in their den. The cubs haven't yet had the treasure of swimming in the river, or fishing, or hunting for a fish, or even eating a fish. So far, they all they have done is suckle. Prince is taking his share of risks by getting close to animals that could rip him to shreds. We are about 45 feet from a jaguar, two in fact. A pair are mating under that tree. But we are counting on the fact that they are mating, that they are bound up in each other, and so we'll be safe. If one of them come toward us, I will have to abandon the camera and run for the boat. For his own safety, Lawrence works with expert trackers who know the area and its dangers well. While he's working the camera, his life is in their hands. In this case, a guide named Wanderlei. Jaguar is hidden in the undergrowth, and I'm busy framing the shot and getting ready to start following with the camera. So it's important our guide is switched on, because from his angle, <laughs> he can keep an eye on the animal's <laughs> movement. So Vanderlei stays alert to keep watch to warn me when the jaguar is about to move. <laughs> right, Vanderlei. Oh, <laughs> Vanderlei. <laughs> Lawrence's next jaguar hunt proves to be no laughing matter. One thing that I learned about the Pantanal is to chat with the locals. And doing that, we get precious hints. That's how I heard about Teresa, a pregnant female that was in a specific area. Teresa and Lawrence eye each other warily. She's crossing over towards us. Teresa circles to one side. Watch out. If she gets to her feet, we must run for the boat. I'm gonna lose sight of her. There's stuff in the foreground. Let's get out of here. Look, now she's noticed the baby otter. She's staring at the little otter. We stuck with the jaguar for seven hours. I set up on the river bank and fried in the sun. But we are almost there. We're getting so close, so close to getting a kill. The rains are beginning. I won't be able to film in the floods. It will be a huge achievement to get a kill. As a wildlife filmmaker, I think there is no greater prize than filming a jaguar. They're real challenge, very smart animals, beautiful and fascinating. And we've been graced with magical moments. I've seen some unforgettable sights. Lawrence still aims to be there when a hunt succeeds. Aroldo is now on the trail of some of the Pantanal's most aggressive animals, white-lipped peccaries, wild pigs native to South America. This is going to be a complex trip. We will have to use different means of transportation. To locate the special animals he's after, he needs to call his network of spotters. When you were there, did you see the animals themselves or just their tracks? They're so ferocious, people are afraid of getting near them. 
The radio is great. <laughs> Aroldo needs to travel further to find a herd. The animals he's after are feared as much as the jaguar, yet they look deceptively harmless. The private reserve is more than 10 times the size of Manhattan. It's formally designated as a site of international importance. If Aroldo is going to find an undisturbed group anywhere, it's here. These animals are so hostile, they're very dangerous to approach on foot. We are planning to build a hide inside the forest to work with the peccaries. This hide must be two or three meters above the ground so we can stay out of the sight of the peccaries. Once it's built, he has to wait two days for animals to return. The amount of work it takes is amazing. Animals come to this spot for a special reason. So it's a waiting game here, too. Things don't go as planned. There is always a snag. Killer bees the whole time in the flowers. These wretched flies that crawl all over us. And it's no good putting on repellent. I've got repellent. They love repellent. You put it on and it just attracts them even more. All day long. They don't sting, but they are still very annoying. At last, Aroldo's stars arrive. White-lipped peccaries. So belligerent, they can't be tamed. They eat almost anything, from small animals to plants, seeds, and roots. They are very social and keep together in gangs that can grow to over a hundred strong. They come to this spot for the salt in the mud here. It keeps the bunch in front of the camera for a long time. Haroldo's sweat pays off. Here in the Pantanal's dry swim, our first day was a success. The peccaries were here for at least an hour and a half. Maybe 30, 40 of them. A good result. Lawrence heads even deeper into the interior. He needs clear water to film a particular predator at the heart of the Pantanal food chain, piranhas. It's hard to imagine that in the 21st century there are still uncharted areas. And I found one with 15 meter visibility and I had the privilege to be the first cameraman to film them. This is the lightweight kit, the one they set. Lawrence knows the lens he leaves will be the lens he needs. And this cold weather, is that normal? <laughs> Here, the fish are returning after the drought in crystal clear streams, filtered by plants far away. Conditions for diving next day are promising. Back to Porto São Pedro. Mr. Armando. Poet of the Pantanal. Water! All right. The unique diving conditions make the long trek worthwhile. It's an enormous pleasure to be back here at Serra do Amolar, with the mountains behind us. This is the best dive spot in the whole Pantanal. The rains have begun, the water has risen, and now we are back with a full crew. I left my place in São Paulo to go to the airport at 4 a.m. Now it's 8 p.m. Pantanal time, 9 p.m. in São Paulo. 17 hours traveling. Two flights, a truck, a boat. But here we are, ready to dive tomorrow.
The next day, Lawrence and his crew search for narrow channels full of fish. The only complaint is the water itself is too warm. Wow, it's hot. Wearing a wetsuit in boiling water. Lawrence must pick just the right moment before the rains. Once the floods come, the fish will scatter wide into muddy marshes where filming is impossible. The piranhas are there, but luckily not hungry for him. What made me nervous in my first dives is that the piranhas always came behind me. I even developed a technique. Facing my camera backwards, I could get frontal shots of them. The murky water lends itself to ambushes. Caimans can make a meal of passing fish. They don't usually attack humans. No good, it went away. Far more unpleasant than caimans or piranhas are leeches. The unexpected suddenly rears its ugly head. Look what was in my wetsuit, leeches. Look at this faux thing. Bloodsuckers attach themselves like vampires. Look at all the mini leeches coming out of the main body. Apart from that, it's been a perfect day. There are only a few days left before the fresh rains and mud will cloud the water. There won't be another chance before the year ends. Lawrence has a plan to maximize diving time by staying overnight at the dive site itself. Hi there, good morning. I was thinking, Mr. Ruivaldo, we could sleep where the water was so great the last time. We could camp there. Perfect. The dive trip turns into a serious expedition. They load stores and equipment to survive for days. Listen to the pock, pock, pock of the engine as we head for the heart of the Pantanal. Hey, this is our home. We'll set up camp here and the guys have already made the fire. We've just woken up, we're preparing to break camp and go off for another day's dive.
Today, the diving is back on course. The waters are so shallow, local boats rely on extra-long propeller shafts to maneuver. Strong currents and fish that have never been seen by a diver before open up a dream world. A beautiful freshwater stingray leads Lawrence to shoals of other Pantanal species. Eight hour diving days follow. He adds new species to his tally each day. gambles on finding what he needs before the rains fill the waters with mud. His bet pays off. It's time to celebrate with other Brazilian specialties. There's a party atmosphere after the successful dive expedition, but the crew can't relax yet. The search is not over. <laughs> That's what I call harmonica. Lawrence still has to capture a key jaguar kill. As his year draws to a close, it's a battle against the clock. In the north of the Pantanal, Haroldo II is racing against time. He only has a few days to reach his goal. The tractor is broken down. It's got a flat. Aroldo finds what he's looking for. Deep in the undergrowth, the female caiman is guarding a raised area, hidden away from predators and the weather. It's her camouflage nest. She's built her nest at the very driest time and raised it above the flood level where water can't rot her eggs. She carries her young carefully down to the water for their first swim. For these little caiman that have just been born, the great challenge begins now. The lagoon where they are going is full of enemies. Lawrence makes a last dash to the north of the Pantanal. I knew the rainy season was closing in, and my window of opportunity was about to shut down. That was my last chance to get a kill. The biggest cat in the Americas versus the biggest rodent on Earth. One group of capybaras looks like prime jaguar prey. Hyper alert, they have a clear view on the riverbank. But just lying there, the jaguar lulls them into a false sense of security. The big cat is killing a baby capybara, out of sight. After six weeks of effort, Lawrence finally documents another kill, off stage. I can only say one thing, hell. 39 days trying to get a kill. Today we got two, both in the bush. The jaguar got within six feet from the capybara. We've been following this jaguar all day, eight hours in all. 
going up and down gullies with our guides, Fabiano, Maciel. They never let it out of their sight. This was the second animal it killed out of sight. I feel desperate, that's the word. Each day is different. Each day is a new star in the Pantanal. No two days are alike. No two lagoons are alike. Nothing is ever repeated here. This is the great thing. Having the opportunity to spend a full year dedicating to understand the water cycle of the Pantanal was one of the main privileges of my life. I truly hope that this film brings to you a little bit of the Pantanal, this magic place that must be preserved. Haroldo and Lawrence have succeeded in unlocking the secrets of the Pantanal, capturing it at its most brutal, but beautiful.